So I'm glad you mentioned friendships and people. Um, you have had uh, many different friends over the course of years, and uh, we've had conversations about it. Um, there have been some things that you have seen over the years, some experiences that you've had. What was it that made you be able to not fall victim or stay victim to some of the lifestyles and the things that you have seen growing up? Yeah, like, so I think, is honestly, I'm not trying to be super deep, but it's really God. It's God's grace and mercy. Like, because uh, it, it's, it's really not by no goodness of my own. Like when I really, really think about it, because I put myself in situations, I've, I've seen situations uh, that could have gone another way. Um, but that, that grace God has given me has caused, caused me to give grace to others. And that's why um, I, I try to walk in the spirit of humility. And then also understanding, don't make the same mistake twice. Mm -hmm. Like there's a whole lot of people that, um, I think the enemy of the black man, honestly, the biggest enemy of the black man, if you want me to be real with you, is being cool. Wow. Let's unpack that. What is that? Like, because at the beginning, well, we talked about like me writing because we don't have a place for our emotions. Like, um, so growing up, like, so growing up, so it's me and my mom in the house at, at 12, from 12 on, you know what I'm saying? So like, I am trying to figure out what does a man look like? really and so my dad's the bishop but he's not in the house um but then i see on tv the hot boys shout out to the hot boys <laughs> of town and everywhere else in, in the city so i grew up an hour and 15 from new orleans so that culture kind of permeated where i grew up so it was white tees, dickies, and soldiery. That's what, you know. One more time, that was what? The people I'm talking to know what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> I'm like, what are those? White tees, white t-shirts, dickies, dicky pants, and soldier Reeboks. Reebok classic. So that's before okay. everybody started wearing the forces. So everybody got that? White tees, white t-shirts, <laughs> dickies. And soldieries, you know. Soldier. And if, and if you had a little money, you got you a herringbone. And so, like, that's what you saw the people that uh the girls liked and stuff like that that's what that's how they look you know and so like you're trying to figure out and navigate all of this um which gives me a level of empathy for people because see i was fortunate enough to have parents to educate me about the end of things my parents always were people uh that taught us to think critically i remember my uh one one of, when my dad was in the house like one of the valuable lessons that he taught me i was about eight years old and he would say, Ian, why did you do that? And I was like, you know, I'm thinking like, he's going to go away. Literally, I know one time I had, it seemed like I stood there hours, probably like maybe like 20, 30 minutes. And I was like, I don't know. He said, stand there until you know. Mm. Mm. And I'm thinking he's going to forget. He said, do you know? Do you know why you did that? And what that, that, that thing taught me how to process what my actions at eight years old, he started teaching me how to, for every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. So that's why I try to tell people, whatever you decide to do, whether it's corporate or, or personal business, or you decide the streets, everything comes with something and you got to take what comes with that. Mm. And so um, if the cost is more than you're willing to pay, then go do something else. And so like for me, um, you know, I remember when I was 19, like uh, I was a pallbearer at our assistant pastor's son's funeral. Somebody had shot him and killed him. You know what I'm saying? It's like somebody I grew up with. like, And uh, that wasn't the first funeral I had been to. But like over the next few years, like seeing people you grew up with, you shot ball with, you hung with, you know, and this is, this is what's happening. You know, people getting buried, people going to prison. and so. Um, but I also understood it because when you grow up and you don't have anything and you want something, you know, and you're, you're thinking about the now, I understand that pressure that some, if you're 15, 16, 17, you shouldn't have to make these decisions, but mm -hmm. 
But if you are having to make these decisions, choose the long-term goals. One of the uh, young men I mentor, he told me something. I ran into him. He's, he's like 21 now. And uh, he told me, he said, uh, and he's a person that he's of respect in his neighborhood. Like people follow him. And I've seen that him since he was a little kid. Uh, but he's a good person. You know what I'm saying? He's a good person. Um, and I told him he was getting in trouble in school. And uh, his mama was like, man, he's at his grandma's house. I'm not even dealing with him. I don't have time. So he liked checkers. So I got some checkers and I pulled up on him. I had a Monte Carlo at the time. So he liked my car. He liked the Monte Carlo. I pulled up auto. Cause, and that's the thing. To, to connect with kids, you got to be relatable to them. You know, they have to see you as somebody that's attainable, that I can be that. Um, so I pulled up on him and, you know, sat in the car, we was talking and he was telling me, man, you know, this, this, and this is happening. And I was like, man, look, I said, man, listen, your life's not fair right now. I said, but I'm going to be real with you. I can't be taken off from work, come and bring you fries every time you throw a temper tantrum. I said, if you want to be straight in life, you're going to have to learn how to be bored sometimes. Learn how to be bored. You got to learn how to be bored. And I think a lot of times in the neighborhood, when you have access to do negative activity, it's like, well, I don't. Okay, yeah, they can start youth programs. You can play ball. But that basketball season is going to end. That football season is going to end. Okay, the people that come in the neighborhood try to help. They're going to have to go home and go to their lives. So you're going to have to make a decision to say, okay, I don't care what I have to choose. I'm not going to choose that. So you, if you want to be straight long term, you're going to have to learn, you know, how to be bored. Uh, so that that's kind of like what I what what life has taught me and what I had to learn at an early age. Uh, and I, I was like, yeah, I'm just start reading books a little bit more. <laughs>